Well, Martin, thank you so much for communicating the HP technical vision going forward as well as uh, uh, what the machine can do because a lot of folks have asked us in IT what, what are we thinking about uh, in regards to the machine and so forth. So, well, first of all, thank you for being here today. Uh, I am the global CIO for Hewlett Packard and uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here today. So a couple things that I want to share with you. I want to share with you uh, our overall vision of uh, our IT strategy going forward. I also want to be able to communicate that it's not just about technology. It's about people. And it's about some of the soft skills and leadership, how you drive some of these things going forward, how you change the culture, and so on. So I'll touch on all these different things, but I'm glad that Martin was able to lay out uh, a lot of what we're doing, how we think about the future of technology, and what I will articulate today is where we are in, in that journey. So as you can see here, the, the, the world's changing. You've seen various metrics uh, before, but if you look at 2020, 8 billion people on the planet, 30 billion devices, 10 million, mo 10, excuse me, 10 million mobile apps, and then of course 40 trillion gigabits of data that we'll be processing for all these folks on the planet. Anyway, those are the projections. And, and when you put all this together, as far as the industry is changing, it puts pressure on us as IT leaders. How we think about what we have to do going forward. When I, when I meet with Meg or I meet with other CEOs from other companies or other CIOs, they ask me, what, what are the things that we should be looking for in an IT organization? Number one, I say, look for the IT organization to make the complex simple. Unfortunately, I've been in IT organizations where it was exact opposite. We made the simple complex. And if we're doing that, that, that hurts. That, that slows down our company, that prevents us to be that agile type organization to be able to acquire, to divest, to continue to grow, and it slows down the velocity of the organization to innovate. So the other thing that people always ask is how do we drive more for less? You've heard that, those words before. But what, what Martin just walked you through and where we are in our journey, and what I've seen in the last two years at, at Hewlett Packard, is that because of these new technologies, we are actually able to do as much as what we used to do a few years ago for the same amount of money and get a lot more done with that money. And that's, that's key for us as IT leaders because the pressures of being an IT leader and working with the CFO or the COO or the CEO, those pressures are not gonna go away. And we as IT leaders need to make sure we're driving that competitive advantage within the organization. So that's how I think about this leading in the new style of IT. So the problem though is this bottom part on the slide. Because you can see the, the enterprise imperatives are not going away. As a matter of fact, they're probably gonna be more intense than ever before. And then we have these mega trends on the right of this chart where they're there, we're expected to be able to adopt and adapt in our organization rather quickly. But the dilemma is that we still deal with this huge amount of legacy. And, and those, that legacy and what's happening with the megatrends, whether it's big data or what we're trying to do with cloud, whether it's public, hybrid, or it's your own private cloud, the pressure's not gonna go away and the dilemma is they're both gonna have to coexist. What I'd like you to think about is before Y2K, a lot of us were saying back then that after the year 2000, COBOL is going to go away. <laughs> COBOL programming is a hot skill right now. 
I mean, it's not cheap to get a COBOL programmer to run the systems that still exist. And what year are we in? 2014. So this is a journey. And, and Martin just articulated the vision coming at us that the technology is going to be moving faster and faster and faster. And we have to rethink about our organizations. He talked about this whole DevOps culture. How do, you, how do you drive that while you have this still in your environment? And that's the dilemma that we have today as IT leaders. So this gives you a glimpse of what our infrastructure looks like at HP. Yes, it's, uh, it's, it's large, and not all of you run really large infrastructures. Matter of fact, some of you probably run small, and you're going, well, I really don't care about that. Well, why I think you may want to care about this is that as we are customer zero, in other words, we're working either in HP labs with Martin or working in the R&D labs of each of the businesses. We're doing alpha beta testing in conjunction. And then we then become first customer and put these products, these enterprise products, in our environment we will find the problems before you, before our customers. And this is something that we have uh, really have taken heart in the last two years. And that, you know, hear me say this a couple times, but this is where leadership matters. Leadership matters because Meg Whitman, the, when she took over HP, she came in with a very collaborative leadership style. And that leadership style really makes us think through is how do you break down the silos in the organization and how do we all work together? For example, Martin and I working together continually. As a matter of fact, I am a part of his chief technology council tomorrow. We'll be presenting some things at the council. Or us working with Bill Vecti in the enterprise group. And matter of fact, we just hired on a new IT leader that this for him is just the natural way of doing things. And I share this with you because of this large infrastructure, it's important for you to know that if it works in our environment, it clearly should work well in yours. And that's why I share this with you. And it's been, it's been a fun journey the last two years to be able to get to this point, but it clearly is not over. There is so much more coming down the pipeline. And every time I hear uh, Martin's presentations, I'm like, oh, I didn't know he was going to do that. Or how did he, how, why are we not talking about this? Well, sure enough, we do. Our technologists work hand in hand together. And, and it's great to be able to see this coming, going forward. Then uh, the big thing for me also was not only just to be able to articulate and, and make sure we're working with our, our product teams, but how do we showcase this? How do we communicate to you the HP on HP story? And I have folks that are here today that have done a very good job of bringing it all together within our four walls where we're able to give information to our teams, our account teams, that can share information with you. But eventually, we got to get to the point where we can put this information where you can just access it. And you really understand our story as well as we do. And that's, that's, that's where we're taking this. But if we just take the first one, the data center transformation. You know, Martin talked about the machine. And he, and he showed you a moonshot server. And what happened for us was we were the first customer of a Moonshot server. And we deployed all the static web pages of hp.com on those servers. And when our technologist actually did the work and did the math, they came back to me and my leadership team and said, you know, Ramon, we think, based on what Moonshot can do, we can actually increase utilization of our data centers and shrink our data center footprint. Now, why I share this with you is at that point in time, we thought we were going to go from 
six data centers running all the internal business of HP to about eight. And with the deployment of Moonshot, it opened our eyes. Oh, and by the way, we were also deploying ecopods. And on that prior chart, you may have saw that we had four ecopods that were deployed. Well, we were looking to deploy two more of those at that time. And by getting this bit of information, we canceled the deployment of the two ecopods. We said we no longer are going to go from six data centers to eight. And we are now on path by the end of next year to go from six data centers to four. And that, by just a small investment in migrating to Moonshot and going onto our private cloud, is a cost-benefit analysis that is just mind-blowing. And that's what the power of this technology, this whole journey that Martin just walked you through of the machine, and again, some of the first steps is what we're doing with the Moonshot server and what we're doing with Helion moving forward is making a huge, huge difference for us. Now, that's the data center transformation. The other thing the cloud provides us, and, and Martin did talk about this, when you virtualize and you automate things, but for us, when we were able to deploy a database in the past, it took us somewhere to two to three weeks, sometimes more, to deploy a database to provision. To provision a server took anywhere from two to three, four weeks. We were built for slow. We were. Today, just by deploying the technologies that we've done today, this is before Helion and so on, we can now deploy a database in less than five minutes. We can now provision not just the server, but the whole stack within four hours. And we're automating more and more of this. And that's where you want to get to. You want to get to the point, and that's where Helion, that's where he was talking about, where you want the immediacy of the cloud to help you become a frictionless environment within IT. Not only to be able to self-provision internally to the rest of the corporation, but you want your organization not doing a lot of the manual stuff. You want your organization to get away from those things that can be automated and work more on the high value things, the more strategic things in the company. And, and that's the way we look at this story. That's where we are today and, and, we're, and we're still driving this forward. But then you gotta protect all this stuff. And the issue for us is, of course, security. The, the, the problems that we have as IT leaders you hear it in the news all the time. I think it was P.F. Chang's just yesterday that ran across the CNBC little border when I was doing my elliptical, read, you know, watching CNBC. I'm like, oh, that poor CIO. Oh, man, it's a bummer. Target, I mean, the, their situation. I mean, a third party sneaking in, going through a third party to come in and stealing credit card information. If you're not concerned about these things, good for you. That's all I got to say, good for you. You should be concerned about them, and you should really be thinking about how you protect your environment. 84% 84, 84 of the issues with security happen at the application layer. 84% of the issues that we deal with happen at the application layer. What are you doing to protect your applications? And what we've learned is if you protect it as you're developing it, it is a lot cheaper than trying to run what we have as our Fortify and WebSense programming after the fact. It's either you're going to pay me now or pay me later. I like the idea of bringing security into the development cycle early as possible. I learned that back in my B-2 bomber, stealth bomber days, is uh, security was job one on that program. And what I've learned on that program is dealing with security, bring them in early, not as an adversary, not as this, this necessary evil, but as an amigo, as a friend, and, and have them work with me up front so we can protect our assets. The other thing that we did, um, 
at security, with, with cybersecurity, is we created this thing called the CDC. It is not the center of disease control. But some people may think that because it is the, it's our center, uh, our cyber defense center. And of course, malware and viruses are all thought about as disease, right? And so the dilemma that we had was we had our security, oper uh, security operations center down in Austin that no one ever got to see. We decided, let's put it in Palo Alto next to our uh, executive business center so people can actually walk in and see what our products do, the value that it brings to the, to the organization. So if you ever do want to come to Palo Alto, if Nth Generation comes up and brings a whole bunch of you, we would love for you to go through it. It's an incredible view of what the bad guys can do. When you visualize what the bad guys can do and what's been happening with uh, my cyber, cybersecurity group is they've been working with labs, they've been working with Haven, and they've been working with the product guys to come up with more intelligent security tools to be more predictive on where the bad guys are going. So not only you can identify quicker than in the past, but you eliminate them or get them out of the uh, if you will, the, the precious parts of your environment sooner than later. And those are just some of the things that we, we think about when we talk about this HP on HP story. The last one I'll share with you on this is what our businesses are doing with big data. And it's not marketing. What we're doing with this, just huge amounts of structured and unstructured information we now are, have built some tools using HP products like Vertica to provide our printing and our personal systems business better analytics than they've ever had before. And you know, the problem with analytics is only da data scientists can get it. And so our job as IT leaders is how do we take, again, the complex and make it simple. So the folks that are used to just dealing with spreadsheets get it. They understand, they get the insights from the information. And this is allowing us to have a competitive advantage now in the marketplace for our printing and personal systems. In our enterprise group, we were struggling with giving them predictive information about how we were going to close the quarter or how we were going to close the month. We built this thing we call the cube. And it's not very, you know, we're, we're IT, we don't come up with very good marketing things, but we, so we call it, they like it because they didn't care about the name. What they cared about was the business outcome that it's creating. And it's now providing them much more predictive information of how we believe the business is going to end the quarter, end the year. And again, that's using tools like Vertica that have been extremely helpful for us. And the business leaders are not data scientists, folks. They're just not. So you have to put it in a way, format it in a way where they get it. It's understandable. They have that drill down capability. And those are just some of the things that we're doing uh, on the whole world of HP on HP. Now, as leaders, we talked about you know, the struggles that we're dealing with, with the legacy and dealing with the, the new technologies and all the imperatives that are coming out of the business. The problem with that is how do you change the culture within your organization to think differently? So what I'd like to share with you is just the journey we've been on in the last two years and why it's been so important for us. So what we needed to do to go from this IT service provider, which is still very needed, you know, I like to think of us that try to do everything as a service going forward, but also to be a value creator in the organization and be known as a value creator and a knowledge center within the company. No matter what company you're in, I believe IT can be that competitive advantage to demonstrate to your customers how brilliant your company is. And as you can see, the th focus that we needed to do is we needed to go from being this inward focused organization to really focusing on our customers and coming backwards. As we develop our systems, as we develop our products, as we help enable process improvement, 
all those things are incredibly important. Once you do that, your mindset changes. You go from optimizing for information technology to optimizing the business. You go through and really identify what are the right things as you prioritize. You get it. The last thing I'd like to focus on this is just that investment in innovation. You know, really, what is innovation? And that's a question you should always be asking your organization. I like to think of it, the budget is investment budget. Some of that budget is for necessary things you need to invest in, but some of it is for true innovation. And what is innovation? It's, it's, it's a situation where you are truly creating either top line or improving the bottom line. That's when you start having that innovative way of doing things, whether it's process innovation or IT innovation or uh, just the way we all work together. I love when people say, well, I'm in IT and that's the business and so forth. I don't get into all that stuff. What I really like to think of is I work for HP and my job is to create value for HP and really make HP a better company to better serve you. That's the way I think about it, and that's what I try to get the whole organization to think about going forward. What I like to do is change a little bit of the gears on the how we approach strategy. These are some of the high-level as aspects that we're trying to do when we think about strategies. So I know we're in information technology, but guess what? I don't know an IT leader in here that doesn't or is not concerned about the financials. If you're not concerned about the financials, then man, you're lucky. <laughs> I've, never, I've never worked in an organization where this wasn't a big deal. And, and it's no difference for us because it's, there are so few precious dollars that we can spend either on what Martin does or what we do, and every dollar is valuable. And we're just stewards of that. And so it's incredibly important that we have a good mindset of how we deal with the financials. The second piece is how do we become more responsive? We want us to be, we, we need to be proactive, but you know, if you're not there yet, you absolutely need to be responsive because things happen that you're, you're not going to be able to predict. Things break. And if you take too long to fix them, your successor will get to come in and figure out how to be more responsive. Transparency. You know, it, it kind of gets back to the financials, but it's very, very important that you're very clear. You're not hiding what's getting done. You're very, very open of, hey, this is what I'm doing in Skunk Works. This is, this is the prioritization of what we're trying to get done across the board. This is how we prioritize. This is the process for prioritization. This is all tied to the P&L as far as value. That's always the hard part is linking what we do to what is the top line and bottom line but it's an important piece of making sure that all comes together. You heard me talk about simplification and innovation. And then, of course, how one of the things that we try to do is be a showcase for you so you can see how we use our products and services going forward. Then, as far as execution, I try to make this simple. It's architecture, it's people, and delivery. And what I mean by architecture, we actually have gone through a process in the last several months of looking at uh, multiple layers in our architecture, whether it's the data layer, apps layer, integration, infrastructure, and, and actually created a reference architecture that we believe is going to be best in class. But our goal is saying that's what great looks like, how do we get there? What's the roadmap for us to get there? And how do we share this with our customers going forward? Because that's an important part of what we do internal at HPIT is to share with our businesses and, of course, our customers. So one of the big parts of the architecture, and you heard, you heard Martin talking about it, is this migration to the cloud. Yes, we're on a journey, but that next phase for us is to be Helium OpenStack and, and modernize those apps that should be truly cloud-enabled and, of course, mobile first. 
especially for the ones that should be mobile first in our environment, is going to be key for us. We're going to go through and do a whole network transformation going forward. And, and then a whole end users transformation, how we deal with the end users, how we service them, how we um, become more proactive and solving their problems before them calling us. Those are the things that we're looking, looking towards. And this is all going to be done from an end-to-end -end architecture for those layers I just shared with you on. And um, then, of course, modernizing our apps. Um, we've gone through some migration of putting apps into our private cloud, but as we move to this Helium OpenStack, we will have to do a true modernization to make that work in that environment. And so you have to pick and choose what are those applications you want to do that in, and are there applications that we should just get rid of, that we should rationalize going forward. And I'm going to talk about people a little more coming up, so I would have probably skipped that at this moment because I'm going to do a deeper dive on, on how we deal with that strategy going forward. And then lastly on delivery. Uh, you know, there are some folks that have oh, an approach that everything is in-sourced or everything is outsourced. And I am one of those IT leaders who have a more balanced view on this. There are certain things that we definitely want to keep in-house, we want to manage, we want to develop, support all in-house. And there are certain things that I want to work with our enterprise services on that make complete sense. They are world-renowned in certain things that I want to work with them. And then there's some things where I may go to a third party, where there's a particular niche skill that they have that we don't have internally and we're never going to have. And so we are looking at those different delivery models, and we have started rolling some of this out. But this is part of our strategy going forward. So the, the, the idea is, what is that best sourcing strategy? And we think about that every time as we are developing uh, new projects or as we're modernizing and so on. And then lastly, uh, as Martin was talking about, the whole support delivery and, and migrating to this DevOps culture. It is a culture. It is a mindset. How do you, how do you get the infrastructure world, the application world, everyone becoming one organization, if you will, and breaking down the boundaries? And that is easier said than done. But it can happen. There are organizations today who are doing it, and they're successful at doing it. And we are just at the beginning of that. You know, as an IT leader, you've got to organize for success. You may use a certain playbook that you've had or a certain way organizations uh, that you've had in the past. But if that organization model doesn't work with the business you're in, you will, you'll struggle. And if it's a constant barrier, you may want to think about, OK, I'm, I'm within a particular business. I better have an org model that fits here. The, as we were going from 85 data centers down to six data centers, and as we went from 7,000 applications down to 2,000 applications, we needed to be a much more uh, command and control and centralized function to make that happen. But there's a point where then you have to focus on, are you making the company better? Are the things that you're doing, is it the only metric, the IT metric, or is it top line, bottom line, and are you driving improvements in the business? So what we did two years ago is we went to more of a federated model, where the business IT leaders are embedded on the leadership teams of our businesses, and our organizations that need to be centralized are centralized. Now, for the IT leader, it creates dynamic tension. But it's good dynamic tension, because it really makes you think through, do you have the right delivery model? Are we doing the right things? Uh, are we making the, the business better from an innovation standpoint? Are we supporting our customers better? And believe it or not, when I'm in our executive business center, when I show the org chart, that's like the favorite chart. Everyone wants to understand how we're organized and, 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 and what do we have to do different from a cultural standpoint. Because it's not just organization. It's your operating model, then it's your how you deliver, and so on. 
and those things we had to go through in the last, the last uh, two years. Then as our professionals, our IT professionals, we really want them to understand the business processes and the way we make money as good as the general managers. This concludes my presentation. <laughs> Is this the way to say it's lunchtime? <laughs> so what do you think? I think, well, thank you very much. I guess it's lunchtime. <laughs>